everyone. My name is Lisa Willen and my presentation is on Theo Van Doesburg. Theo Van Doesburg was born as Christian Emil Marie Kupper on August 30th, 1883 in the Netherlands. His father was Willem Kupper and he decided to change his name because he thought of his stepfather Theodorus Doesburg as his natural father. He died on March 7th, 1931 in Switzerland of a heart attack when he was 47 years old. He served in the Dutch military in World War I from 1914 to 1916. He was a de Stijl artist and he was one of the founders of the de Stijl movement along with Piet Mondrian. The de Stijl movement is recognizable by the simplified geometric and reductive aesthetic and they thought that painting, design, and architecture were all equally important in the arts. He was influenced by Vincent van Gogh and modernist figurative styles and he had a revelation about spirituality and its connection to painting after reading Kandinsky's autobiography. Theo created abstract paintings, designed buildings, made room decorations, made stained glass, furniture, and other household items. He also wrote essays and treatises on geometric abstraction and de style, published journals, and organized art exhibitions. His first piece that we're going to talk about is called Composition 7, also known as the three graces. It uses the three primary colors plus white for the rectangles and black for the background. As we go on in the presentation, you'll see that most, if not all of his artworks, use at least the three primary colors or sometimes only primary colors. The black background adds to the contrast and it makes the colored rectangles pop. The geometrical composition is orderly arranged and rational because even though he uses just colored rectangles and squares, the way he places them on the canvas makes the composition look balanced and equal. The way the colored shapes are placed also makes for a harmonious looking abstract composition. The next one we're going to talk about is Theo's Composition 8, also called the cow. He called it this because it's supposed to look like an abstracted version of a grazing cow. I personally don't really see how you can get a cow from it, but I'll just go with it. This piece was originally distributed to teach others about the De Style movement and to educate people on it. And I think it's one of his first pieces that he did for the De Style movement, so it shows his passion for the, for the movement from early on. The painting is sometimes referred to as the definition of ac abstracted or abstraction because he simplified and broke down a living animal into its most basic shapes and colors. This next piece is called Rhythm of a Russian Dance. It was the, one of the first pieces of Theo's career just as he was beginning to get into the de Stijl movement. He named it Rhythm of a Russian Dance because the lines of paint are supposed to represent the movements of traditional Russian dancers. They're said to represent dancers because the lines of paint have quick sweeps and short stops and they seem to be carefully timed. The lines of color are either horizontal or vertical and they're long and narrow. Normally horizontal and vertical things seem static and still but the way that Theo created the painting, they seem to imply movement. The bright colors that are used and the name of the painting help the viewer picture the movement. Theo is quoted to describe his painting as proof that abstraction is more concrete than a naturalist painting, and he says this because it depicts the mental constructs behind the idea of a thing. This piece is called Counter Composition in Dissonance 16. It's one of Theo van Doesburg's most famous paintings in the Counter Composition series. The piece consists of rectangles or squares, and they're all tilted at 45 degree angles and outlined in an even black line. The angle that the shapes are tilted is relevant to the canvas and they look smooth and flat. As I mentioned earlier, Theo uses the primary color scheme on the majority of his paintings and this one is no exception. The colors of the shapes have two tones of red, two tones of blue, and two tones of yellow that are placed next to each other, which adds to the composition by making it look more dynamic. By tilting the shapes, this also creates a dy dynamic composition because angled objects or objects touching the edges of the canvas are thought to be more dynamic. By using this balance of abstract forms, Theo creates a style work that is similar to that of Mondrian's. Just for context, this is an example of one of Mondrian's famous works. It's called Composition 2 in red, blue, and yellow. If you remember from the first slide, Mondrian was the other person who created the De Stijl movement with Van Doesburg, so it makes sense that their work would look so similar to each other's. This is the last piece that I'll be talking about in my presentation. It's called Simultaneous Counter Composition. This one was created by Theo after his split with Mondrian in 1924, 
which led to a small but crucial difference in the way he thought about his painting. As you can see, the piece no longer just has spaced out squares and rectangles, but it still uses the primary colors, so he hasn't changed that. Instead, it only has four squares, and two of them are touching only at the corners. In the pieces that I've shown before, he usually keeps all the shapes from touching unless they're separated by a black outline. The piece shown is kind of a halfway point between the style and something else, because Van Doesburg disregards the horizontal and vertical aspects of the style, but he keeps the colors in geometrical feel. Theo felt that this painting was necessary to look more dynamic than the rest, and he accomplishes this by adding the two black lines that intersect each other while overlapping everything else, and by using the edge of the canvas to crop the squares. This creates a visual effect that makes it look like these are two separate pieces of artwork, but simultaneous at the same time because they are overlapping each other to become one. This is the end of my presentation. Hope you enjoyed it and learned something.